The countdown to the new millennium in 1999 was fraught with excitement, trepidation and apocalyptic predictions. From the Antichrist to interplanetary catastrophe, there was no shortage in the range of predictions, but one particularly real threat was on everyone's minds as the clock ticked over. In 1993, an article called Doomsday 2000 was published in the magazine Computer World, outlining what they believed to be one of the biggest potential catastrophes in the next decade. This was one of the first attempts to bring the problem out into the wider world and have coordinated efforts made to change the impending disaster. The problem that the article was focused on was what became known as the Millennium Bug, or the Y2K Bug. The problem arose from the expensive nature of computer storage at the time, often reaching $100 per kilobyte, meaning that everything on a computer had to be as compact as possible. So to save space, most programming used a six-digit date format, with the 19 being taken off the year to save storage space. For example, 1970 would just read as 70. So when the clock finally ticked over to the year 2000, the computers of the world would assume the year was 1900, which would cause all sorts of bugs and glitches, from incorrect dates shown around the world to full system crashes of important medical equipment. The problem quickly gained public attention, and the governments of the world realised this could be a serious problem, so started taking action. In 1997, the British Standards Institute published Year 2000 conformity requirements that sought to offset the issues that the Millennium Bug could cause. Four rules were set. No value for current date will cause any interruption in operation. Date-based functionality must behave consistently for dates prior to, during and after year 2000. In all interfaces and data storage, the century in any date must be specified either explicitly or by unambiguous algorithms or inferencing rules. And the year 2000 must be recognised as a leap year. The world began preparing, but as with any potential crisis, some saw it as an opportunity to scam, scaremonger and just simply lie about the problem. A UK minister working on the problem at the time said that a large part of the job was to keep on top of the hype and hyperbole in the press, trying to reassure the public that the government had it covered, and as long as advice was followed then everything would be fine. But some found it too much of a good story to leave behind, and so panic about the bug still very much existed throughout the public. One woman even moved her entire family to a deserted area of Scotland, with such a backstep from technology that she had to get water from a well, clearly believing that the apocalypse was upon us all. But as the public panicked, experts worked tirelessly to iron out the problems that the bug could cause. The experts had worked out a plan to fix the errors well within the time they had, and in the few years up to 2000, nearly every skilled programmer was working on the bug in some form, with 1999 being a year where that's pretty much all everyone was doing. Most national governments, in particular the US and the UK, put an extraordinary amount of money and effort into fixing software that would be affected by the bug, but also crucially raising public awareness about the dangers and myths about the bug. In 1999, an eight-page booklet titled Action 2000 was distributed in British newspapers, which sought to give advice to everyone about the dangers of the Y2K bug, both business and domestic. It detailed how to deal with the problem and make sure electronic items were Year 2000 compliant, but also worked to dispel some of the myths that were floating around about the true extent of Y2K explaining that lawnmowers, hedge trimmers, rotivators, barbecues and swimming pool equipment was all fine. In the United States, drastic measures were taken to ensure that the country would continue running in the event of the Millennium Bug causing mass computer crashes across the country. In fact, many of the measures were brought into use after the September 11 attacks in 2001, to keep the stock markets open and the economy running as Manhattan suffered with power issues. The US had also made sure, in tandem with Russia, that both countries wouldn't experience errors in their nuclear attack early warning systems, which could, of course, have ended in catastrophe. Which brings us on to the event itself. Despite the years of planning and trying to dispel fear from the public, many were nervous about the effects that the Millennium Bug could have, but most breathed a sigh of relief when the clock ticked over and the planet didn't collapse. Except the woman who moved to that house by the well, she probably felt quite stupid. But despite the world's best efforts, not everything was totally safe from the bug. There were still some issues that have been attributed to the Millennium Bug. A few of the problems were just incorrect dates. For example, the Naval Observatory in the US reported the date as 19,100 on their website. And 170 people were summoned to court in South Korea in 1900. In the UK, some credit card transactions failed. And in Australia, bus ticket validation 
ovulation machines also failed. But much more worryingly, over 150 pregnant women were given incorrect results of a Down syndrome test, in an error that was attributed to the Millennium Bug. Even more worryingly than that, US missile launch detection systems picked up launches in Russia and simply attributed it to a Y2K bug error. However, Russia had planned the launches as an attack during its conflict with the Republic of Chechnya. The launch detection system had actually worked. The aftermath of the Millennium Bug brought in an interesting argument. On one side are the people who say that it could have been a catastrophic problem, but thanks to years of effort and planning by experts all over the world, the potential disaster was averted. The few bugs that were caused by the mistakes showed that the bug was real and that it could have been a serious problem. But others argue that the hundreds of billions that were put into changing possible system faults and the years of effort was completely wasted, as there was never any real danger anyway. Some countries, such as South Korea, Italy and Russia, put very little to no money into protecting against Y2K, and there was no kind of apocalypse in those countries. In addition, many schools and small businesses did very little to prepare against the bug, and yet there was no great catastrophe there either. Despite these arguments against the preparation of the Y2K bug, however, many say that because certain countries put so much effort into preparing for the bug, other countries, where the software was comprehensively rolled out to after the problems were fixed, were fine. So which is the more convincing argument? It's up to you. But it's clear that many people were worried about the potential consequences of the time, and many put an extraordinary amount of effort into trying to make sure that a potential bug didn't cause any issues when humanity hit the new millennium. Perhaps the title, How Planning Saved the World, is a bit hyperbolic, but it really captures the zeitgeist of the time, and the worries so many had in the back of their minds that have lived on in stories and anecdotes, from why you shouldn't listen to experts, to the time we thought planes were going to fall out of the sky. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Stay safe.